Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be finishing up our series for famous puzzles in the philosophy of language with Bertrand Russell and Gertrude Frege. In this video, we're going to be looking at Russell's solutions to the last two puzzles we offered and Russell's theory of definite descriptions in a very basic form. So, for Russell, the statement, the present king of France, is very different in kind from names like Scott or Bill. The present king of France is something Russell is going to call a definite description. What does that mean? Instead of calling someone by a name, it describes something. So the present king of France is something of an attribute or a property, while being Scott or being Bill is just to have that name. So definite descriptions cannot have meaning on their own. We can only represent them if they're placed into a proposition. So. We can see this very clearly if we take J to be John, BX to be X is bald, and KX to be X is the present king of France. We can't represent on its own the present king of France, as we noted, because definite descriptions don't work like that. We can see the difference using these titles between the statement John is bald and the present king of France is bald. Because we would represent John is bald simply as B, J. Of J, J is bald. However, we would represent the present king of France is bald with there exists some X such that X is K, X is the king of France, and for all Y, if Y is K, if Y is the king of France, that implies that X equals Y, and X is bald. It seems like a really complicated way to say this, but we're basically saying that there exists exactly one thing that is the king of France, and that one thing is, in fact, bald. If you want more information on kind of the way that we use logic to state numbers of things, you should check out my video on identity, where we actually deal with some of these puzzles from the philosophy of language. So when it's framed this way, it should be clear that this whole statement is, in fact, false. It's not unknown or unclear. So the LEM, the law of the excluded middle, is going to hold. It is not in fact the case that there exists one individual that is the king of France and is bald, as there is not an individual that is in fact the king of France. A similar strategy is going to assist us in denying the existence of the king of France. Instead of representing the proposition as it's not the case there exists some x such that x equals k and being forced to assume that k exists and therefore showing the falsehood of our own proposition. We should represent it as it's not the case there exists some x such that x is k. Representing k as a property instead of an object that x is identical to allows it to be an empty set. We could have some property like being around square such that there doesn't exist anything that is around square. Of course, people like Meinyang are going to disagree with this assessment of everything. Check out Meinyang's Jungle if you're curious. But for most of us that don't believe in non-existent objects, this is going to be sufficient. Now, an extra credit problem for those of you who are interested in the philosophy of language. How can Frege or Russell's systems deal with the following problem? Take the following statements. Dionysus is the son of Zeus. All unicorns have one horn. Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker. These seem to express true propositions. Yet all of the terms fail to refer. Dionysus, Zeus, Unicorns, Darth Vader, and Anakin Skywalker don't actually exist. At the very least, even if you think those propositions are false, they seem to express propositions whose truth values are importantly different from statements like Dionysus is the son of Poseidon. All unicorns have two horns, and Darth Vader is Yoda. It seems that these latter three statements, we would say they're definitely false. While the first three, we would say that at least they're partially true or in some way true. But with Frege and Russell's systems, the question for you is, are we committed to claiming that all of the above statements are false, or can we allow for some or any of them to be true? and explain how in the comments below. So, that was the end of our series for famous puzzles in the philosophy of language. Those were Russell's solutions and the theory of definite descriptions. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.